What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay per view point edition of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me, as always, is Robert E. Felice. Perpetual joy and glee and good tidings to all of you. It's fucking NXT TakeOver, and life is just good. Good old swell pay-per-view. Lots of things to talk about on the good side of things here. That's what we are talking about, by the way. NXT TakeOver Portland just ended not that long ago. And we want to give you our impressions of the whole thing and our thoughts and the results recap and all the other kind of stuff that we normally break down here. So that's the way that the pay-per-view point works. And as always, with everything on the podcasts, I want to know what you have to say as well. So if you are listening to this on the Spotify or the Stitcher feed or iTunes or whatever it is, and you can't leave a comment, go over to YouTube. While you're there, hit that little subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Ring that little notification bell, like the video, drop a comment below, and I don't know, maybe send a tweet at Team YouTube and say, the fuck, why don't you have this uh, channel monetized? <laughs> but yeah, drop a comment below, tell us what you think about all these different things, and tell us what you think about what we think, because that's what we're going to be doing here. It's podcast. That's how podcasts work. We tell you stuff. We talk, and then it ends. Um, well, this is been a this rock out moment. We've talked about... <laughs> Uh, let's talk with the pre-show. Uh, we had, instead of Pat McAfee, Charlie Caruso and Sam Roberts were joined by Mansoor. And in typical fashion, what's been happening lately, Sam Roberts getting booed quite a bit and really kind of like turning into the skid. Yeah. yeah. And Mansoor, lots of cheers. I'm a big fan of Mansoor. Which is good. I think we're looking for stuff for Mansoor to do I say we as though I work there I don't um well little does everybody know backstage you and I are sitting there going what can we do with Mansoor I know <laughs> like we got this Saudi show coming up a couple of weeks uh, and I know out there I know that people have been requesting it yes I will I will get on changing Monday Night Raw to Tuesdays with a pink logo <laughs> I mean you know it's I'll only a matter one. of time <laughs> I'll give we that got, one guy the uh, in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> that one guy that was asking me a couple years ago that I could get him a work visa so he could come over and see Money in the Bank. I'm sorry, I didn't figure. It out. We'll, we'll, we'll get you a work visa for uh, Super <laughs> Showdown. Don't worry. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, Mansoor's there. He's gonna work them all. Mansoor's actually good. I think that's why people are into him. It's cool that they're showing him more because, I mean, at the very least. I would assume that he does something for Super Showdown, but they've not at all alluded to that. And maybe Mansoor's people watching done. this uh, are at least going, oh, yeah, Mansoor, that's a guy. And then when they announce that he's facing, I don't know, uh, who's not doing anything. Um, who's a good worker that's not doing anything? Shinsuke Nakamura is pretty dormant right now. Uh, he'll probably fight for the Intercontinental title. But yeah, I, I don't know. Let's just say like Shinsuke. It doesn't really matter. That's the point. Uh, if they just go like Mansoor is going to face blah, blah, blah. People go, oh yeah, that's the guy from TakeOver. I remember him. Or, you know, it's something. Reminds people that he's out there. And he gets cheers. Cool. I liked it. Liked it. Nothing much else on the pre-show though. But we did have the beginning of the show was Poppy doing a five minute or so musical performance. And uh, we're going to, we're going to just, I'll I'll do this one real quick for you. I really enjoy Poppy. I enjoy what Poppy brings. I think I think it's just a great fit. I think she's got more characters. She's got more of a character than ninety percent of the main roster. I dig the vibe. I thought it was cool. It didn't overstay its welcome. Like fucking flow right at WrestleMania. You know, it it worked. Uh, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. You for also me. pass on the Beatles, though, so I take yeah to know consideration of what you say musically. But you know what I did find the other day? A really good Eurodance remix of Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Huh. <laughs> You're gonna have to send that to me. <laughs> that like boom, do 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 do, kind of like Eurodance '90s pop shit. I Big love band. good yeah. synth, man. Good synth <laughs> music. 
that will be a dark cast at some at some point. We'll <laughs> at just some... go through our iPads. <laughs> oh god, if I start going through my music and I'm like hitting that on shuffle, people will see like why are you going from Sting's Shape of My Heart to uh the Chicken McNugget commercial? <laughs> I'm into nuggets, y'all. It's catchy. Why not? Poppy thing. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's it's a thing. It doesn't appeal to me, but like you said, it didn't outstay its welcome, so it's it wasn't like this it was like 15 minutes worth of stuff that we've had at WrestleManias in the past where it's like, good Lord, can we just get some wrestling in here? They did the video package and she talked, uh, sang for two minutes or something. That's fine. Um, and we went straight into our first match, which was Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic for the North American Championship. A quick note, uh, there was a thing that people were picking who their choices were for TakeOver. And it was like Bailey and Apollo Crews and all that. Tasha Banks said, I'm going with Keith Lee because I can't pronounce the other guy's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it made me think, how quick, when or if, I'm assuming when, Dijakovic goes to the main roster, how fast is it going to take them where Vince can't say Dijakovic and he goes, he's fucking Dijak now. He's just Dijak, you know? Dom- Dominic Dijak. It's just, that's his, fucking, his fucking name's Chris Dijak. Like, it's not hard to say. It wouldn't shock me if they're just like, well, we don't want like people having first and last names, so he can't be Dominic Dijakovic, but we can't pronounce Dijakovic, so we're just going to call him Dijak. The end. He's just Dijak. But well, the listen, match... Big E lost his Langston. Uh, Cesaro will never get Antonio back. We do. We have seen uh, Ali get his back, but I'm almost certain... He becomes either just Donovan or just Dijakovic because Donovan would be really weird. What if they changed it to Dijak and then Ovic? <laughs> That's his full name. Like Dijak space Ovic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's as awful, but I don't put anything past them. Dijak Ovic. Like that kind of thing. Uh, match was fantastic. As expected, Keith Lee and uh, Dijakovic have had uh, five matches together or so, and a couple other like triple threats and everything, and every single one of them has been great. So I'm not shocked. This was awesome. We had Keith Lee doing a hurricanrana, Dijak jumping over the rope and uh, Lee catching him. Dijak did a corkscrew moonsault. We had the... Um, I, Mara was calling it the avalanche feast your eyes, but I don't think he hit that because he's supposed to kick him and he didn't kick him, right? Yeah, but he did the he did a first move. part of the motion. Yeah. Uh, I thought that Keith Lee had got injured at that point. These guys scare the fuck out of me, dude. Like, <laughs> like when they're on the top of the rope together. Let's, let's just let's just go down this fucking rabbit hole for a second, <laughs> Terry. Earthquake. Keith Lee. Uh, fucking Big Show. Keith Lee. Wow, Keith Lee shouldn't be doing the shit he does. Like It just, <laughs> it just shouldn't be a thing. But it, it is, and it's amazing. It's fucking amazing. This dude is a big, thick boy, much thicker than Bronson Reed, who will have an amazing year. <laughs> Doing reverse Frankensteiners to a guy who's as big as Kevin Nash. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are we watching? I loved that Mark Henry vignette. He's talking about like you know you got these two big men that are redefining what a big man is. Dijakovic, he can step over the rope like the Undertaker and fly around like he's Rey Mysterio or whatever he had said. I can't remember. And like uh, Keith Lee, he's three fifty and moves like he's two oh five. I'm like. Fuck yeah, they do. Like, yeah, it's going to be pumped, you know? And, uh, and Dijak hits a C4 off the top rope. Uh, the power bombs, where he gets right back up, gets a second power bomb. There's, a, I mean, this isn't even like a big, like, oh, the two big men doing something crazy, but like, yeah, there's slaps on the chest. I thought that was a great moment where he they're chanting one more time, so he puts him in the chair and slaps him again. And then Dijak nails him with a super kick and then hits it with a oh, fucking springboard sent on. <laughs> And I'm like, I already wrote down Grizzly Magnum equals awesome. One more time, give me more. Then I wrote down great super kick from Dijak on Lee. And then I wrote down Springboard Senton WTF. Because I was just like, 
Yeah, follow the one thing up with another, follow up with another, and then oh, we're just gonna do a springboard senton. It's not Dajakovi. He's not like what seven foot fucking tall or something. It's like I fucking like this is legit the equivalent of Mark Henry versus Test, right? Size and stature wise, but these motherfuckers are doing like Rey Mysterio versus Jeff Hardy. Right. It's, it's so crazy, but it's so much fun. It's so good. Like I just want to see these two. Is fun, like just be fun all the time, please. And that's why, like you know, more often than not, I'll go. Ah, we've seen this match before. I'm not interested. It's a rematch. Whatever. This is our fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth, uh, eighth match, and I'm like, all right, give me them at the next takeover. Give me them at WrestleMania. Like take away uh i don't know like the the raw tag team championship match or something like that give me lee versus dijakovic at wrestlemania and i'll be like fuck yeah you know just these guys are great they're so good i hope against hope that everybody backstage gives them the praise that they deserve like i want vince telling him both uh dijak and lee loves keith lee i'm sure of that i want him telling them that he's proud of them. So they know that instead of it just being like just the boys in the back or something, you know what I mean? Listen, I cannot stress enough. Sometimes, listen, sometimes you just want to be like, ah, oh, big men shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, I watched Bret Hart versus Diesel the other day and I was like, ah, oh, what a, what a logically thought out match. Sometimes though, Fuck logic. It's so fucking cool that these guys can do what they do. And, like, if they can do that, why the hell wouldn't they? And what a banger start to the show. What a banger show. First of all, like, top to bottom, I don't think I can find a single negative. Yeah, you know what? Uh, well, no, I can. There is something I, I'm going to I think I know about. what you're going to say, but we'll get there. <laughs> but this is already in my notes as... A potential pay-per-view of the year this is just awesome and it's a great match to start off with lee retains by pinfall and then just to further drive home the point of how like i i put up a thing on uh bleach report the real winners and losers i was like both of them are winners Jack lost but they made it a point to have lee help him up and then help him get onto the ropes Literally, so he can pose so too pose together like oh so good Mm-hmm. So fucking good. Now they need to challenge for the tag titles of Tampa. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now they need to beat some of the people on the main roster for their titles so they can replace them at WrestleMania. <laughs> like, I would totally take Keith Lee versus Roman Reigns for the Universal title. Oh, God. You tell me the idea that you're going to take Keith Lee and or Dominic Dijakovic and repla- uh, replace Bray Wyatt? I'm all in. <laughs> Like, ah, so good. Like, I love getting on here and getting to be happy. And I enjoy Poppy. I enjoy good wrestling. For the start of the show, no miss for me yet. I don't even like poppy seed bagels. Poppy I hate seed poppy anything. Seed bagels. Yeah. Poppy seeds? No. Poppy the performer? Pretty good. <laughs> then we went to the street fight Dakota Kai versus Tegan Knox. Hell of a match. Lots they of good followed moments. followed up a that, banger with a banger. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's some great moments of just like, um, like they start off and it's uh, Dakota Kai attacks Tegan Knox during the entrance. So just straight into it. The way that a blood feud, a bitter should rivalry should go, be. right? Yep. Like you follow the logic behind it. There's a great quick spot where uh, Dakota Kai put Knox on the apron and then smashed a trash can lid on her head. Loved that. Loved you know, the Molly go round that Knox did. I always notice the stupid aesthetics. Love that the trash can is spray painted black because it's <laughs> NXT and they're they're edgier. Like just dumb shit like that. I genuinely find enjoyment and I cannot say enough. This is the antithesis of TLC 2019. Uh, 2018 I'm sorry Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins I fucking hate you I hope Roman has to answer to God 
All right, let's lock up. <laughs> no. Nope. These two girls during their entrances are fighting, and they're just fighting, and they just go. And at one point, they break out a chain, and Kai is screaming, "No, get off me, get off!" Like. It felt real. And yes, I know it's fake, but you know what? I know Joker's fake, and that fucking movie sucked me in for two hours. This match was amazing. <laughs> for, for a split second when you said that movie sucked me, I'm like, oh, God, where are you going here? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's like, it's, uh, Knox gets a laptop, and she starts bashing on Dakota Kai's knee because her knee had had an injury. Why and wouldn't she want to do that? There? They took what was around them. Imagine that. They didn't fucking, like, they took a laptop that was just there and bang right to the knee. You know what's awesome? They didn't pull it out a stupid kendo stick. That is fucking cool. I also wrote this down because I thought it was funny. Uh, Dakota Kai and uh, Knox are on the outside. They're on the apron. This is right before the, the laptop and the steel chain thing. And Dakota says, uh, this is after she tied her up with the duct tape, I think. Um, she goes, you asked for this, Tegan. And some guy in the crowd goes, kiss her. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not where it's going, but okay. But, well, you know, for for some contingent of the audience, I'm sure they wanted to go there. I, when they brought up the chain, I'm like, yep, you don't see this shit. You just don't see this shit. You don't see chains. You don't see them do things like, I want to put your fucking head inside of a chair and try to axe kick it right off. Like, this looks like threatening stuff. And Knox has the match won, but she decides that she's not done. She wants to to end Dakota Kai's career. So a couple times throughout the match, she's messing around with this table. And each time she's messing around with it, she's checking to make sure that it's solid. That, like, the the legs of the table aren't going to collapse and all that. Every time she did that, I'm thinking, oh man, something must be off about that table. Something's going to happen. Something was certainly off about that table. And she gets up to go jump on top of Dakota Kai, who's on the, the table, and somebody interferes, and it's Reina Gonzalez, who they are now referring to as Raquel Gonzalez. And she's looking pretty good. She's looking kind of imposing, you know, like all that kind of stuff. She doesn't have that that weird cowbell that she used to be carrying around, which I'm all for that because that was stupid. So for five seconds, when I just saw her profile and I see the black hair and the the physique, I'm like, is that Sonia? Sonia? Yeah, I I thought so too. I was like, Sonia DeVille's here? Oh, shit. They moved Sonia. And then when they said it's, it's Raquel Gonzalez. And then, all right, most situations like this it's oh my god what are you doing here and she shoves her from the apron where she was standing off top rope to the table nah she gets up there with her for no first of all she flips dakota kai off the table so i'm thinking all right she's not necessarily there to help her and then grabs tegan by the face and it's like you remember me double chokes her like double hand chokes her and just launches her at this table which does not break that's because she just didn't gauge how to throw her or it maybe it's on tegan knox for not jumping back further but i think it's more on gonzalez i i don't know i'm not a wrestler yeah whatever but to me i was just like ah fuck something did happen with the table and now I'm thinking, I hope that Dakota Kai or that Tegan Knox doesn't have like a concussion or something. Yeah, poor poor girl's got some some bad luck. I didn't double check anything yet. Let me see if anybody has. I haven't has... heard anything. She did a promo afterwards. She's good. Ah, okay, that's that's good because I was really just like, don't tell me she's gonna have concussion on top of this now. Like, if that happens, and she goes, and you can't rest. Yeah, like if she went from having like. We're going to put you in the Mae Young Classic, but you're in an alternate and whatever. And, well, we can't really have you in there. And uh, you're injured and you're out for a year. But we'll come back the next time. Uh, you get injured for another year and whatever. Then you come back and then it's like, well, we're going to do a storyline where you get injured again. But you'll fight your friend. Uh, well, now you got a concussion. That'd be like, all right, she's, uh, as the old phrase says, she's snake bit. You know, just 
the universe is telling her, we don't want you to fucking do this. <laughs> and every time she tries to do it, then, you know, hopefully that's not the case. And that was, that was my negative of the night really was just that. Cause I was just like, damn it, Raina, you had one job. Did you see the documentary leading up to this match? The comeback? Yeah. Yeah. Good shit, right? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. yeah. NXT, and I don't know if this is just a thing that I'm buying into the underground and it's just not the main roster, but everything about NXT just feels right. Well, not Reina's uh, choke slam through the <laughs> No, but you know what? It didn't feel right, but even that was vicious and it felt like, oh shit, we now have a new major player in the women's division. They managed to make stars in that that brand. Yeah, they do. This is the best that Gonzalez has ever looked, that's for sure. Losing to Casey Catanzaro and I forget who else she might have faced, but she didn't really do much other than that, so... It's a step in the right direction, even though that was botched. And yeah, that doesn't take away from the street fight. I don't want anybody to think that either. So it's fantastic. Very, very good street fight. Um, quick little plug. Uh, if you want us to do more of all this kind of stuff that we're doing, donate to the Patreon if you've got the spare change. And when it comes to that kind of stuff, I mentioned this all over, over and over and over again, but uh, you know, a dollar goes a long way. The more people that do that, the more that I can counteract the idea that this channel isn't monetized at the moment who knows if that'll get monetized again in march but we'll see um in the meantime though if maybe you want to use ad block well for five bucks it's kind of like ad block forgiveness it's sort of you know kind of counterbalance it that way but for 10 bucks a month you got the dark cast and we actually just did a dark cast and i i don't know if i posted it already or if i scheduled it i actually don't remember for sure but um that is something that's up on the Patreon, and I'm pretty sure I, I posted it, where we went through and we picked the 32 men and women that are going to be a part of the Smark Madness tournament, which is going to start up in the next couple of weeks. What and, a good time. Um, you know, we try to do more of that kind of stuff, and if you donate to the Pick Your Poison tier, then for that, if you request a special feature of some kind of sort, then we do it. So at some point over this next week, we are going to watch NXT Arrival and do a fan outs table a commentary track for that so you want more nxt hey look at that you got it that's how it works so uh yeah just a reminder there's the patreon there's also the patreon for fanboysanonymous.com which is the geek culture website where i do movie reviews and other kind of things like that and we actually just did a patreon sponsored fan tracks for that so if you are interested in hearing Rob and I watch and talk about Batman Superman World's Finest the animated series bunch of episodes then that's coming out in a couple days so yay let's move on to johnny gargano versus finn balor uh to be honest not as good as i was hoping that it would be i knew this was the match you're gonna say well it's not to say that it was bad because it certainly wasn't i feel like it was slow to start but when they found the rhythm brother did they get going like, I will say it probably is my least favorite match of the night still, though. Uh, I think that's fair. Because, I don't know, I think it's... The the moment had passed in a way where it was like they were rehashing a lot of the stuff from October, November, and it's already in February. And in a lot of ways, it felt like the moment had passed with Balor and Gargano. But when they kicked it off and they found a rhythm, I thought that they did a really good match. And it's one of my favorite Finn Balor matches in his whole WWE career. Balor wins. Uh, he's scolding Gargano at the end of the thing. Really? Really yeah. fucking in your face, like grabbing his face. And Gargano's still trying to like claw at him afterwards. But wow. Good match. Balor wins. Gargano loses. But is Gargano in NXT ever out of the picture? Well, here I am after this match happens, and I'm writing up on that Bleacher Report article. I'm writing, all right, winner, Finn Balor, loser, Johnny Gargano. 
well, Johnny Gargano, he can he can bounce back from this, and I wouldn't be shocked at all if they have some kind of a gimmick match at TakeOver Tampa, and that way Johnny Gargano gets his win back, and all is right in the world. Little did I know about later on. <laughs> oh, no. One thing I can promise you, boys and girls, all is right with the world and the NXT universe. <laughs> Then we had a little thing with the Undisputed Era speaking to Kathy Kelly backstage where Roderick Strong's basically just being like, oh, the boys are going to retain their titles and like, fuck off, Kathy. <laughs> kind of thing. They do a really sweet thing. We'll talk about it after we're done reviewing the show. They do a really sweet thing for Kathy um, during the post-show Q&A. Oh, really? Yeah. That, well, let's talk about it right now. Why not? Well, well, as you know, or some of you might not know, Kathy Kelly is leaving WWE. She has, tonight was her last night, and Triple H, you know, really, like the father he's become is just like, you know, and I say we are NXT, and I don't just mean the wrestlers, I mean everybody from the people who hang up the lights, and you're one of the smartest, you know, brightest people I've ever met, and, you know, you'll be back, and the beautiful thing about what we do is we make stars and we release them to the world to do amazing things. And now here's some other people who want to do something nice for you. And she's already crying. And here comes the Undisputed Era with like donuts for her. <laughs> and like pictures. It's not the, uh, the Christmas gifts that they took away from her. <laughs> Probably the same thing. It's like they give her donuts and they all do like a group hug and... They let her do the whole that's undisputed line. And then as she's crying, Triple H goes to Roses. And he says, it's not goodbye. It's just see you later. You know, we are NXT and you can always come home. And it's just like. <laughs> and then he quick goes, get the camera. And he does that finger. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just like this beautiful moment of, man, they, they all seem so happy there. You know, and they, then they come up to Raw and they're like. They're fucking miserable. <laughs> They're like, how much money can I get in this contract? I don't know if I want to be here anymore and all this. It's so weird. NXT's a family. I loved it. I loved it. I'm going to miss Kathy. Kathy did her job, man. I'm going to miss her. When we moved on to the NXT Women's Championship match, Rhea Ripley successfully retaining over Bianca Belair, who what we were kind of... We're kind of talking about this ahead of time about the idea that Belair needs to be the powerhouse in a team, uh, in a in a match, for it to be able to work right. And she was pretty much the powerhouse here, and that's why it ended up being good. Like yeah, Ripley's good, Belair's good. You put them in the ring together, and you don't mess around them? with the formula, and it ends up being good. Shocker! Like, Wouldn't you, know? you fucking know it, Tony? A positive plus positive equals a positive. That what a fucking amazing match. Bianca Belair, real quick, awesome robe. Loved the whole Black History in the Making robe. I thought that was a really cool touch. She makes her own gear as if she wasn't fucking cool enough. They get into this match. Um, you know, they feel each other out. They get into this moment in the corner where they just start smacking the fuck out of each other. And I thought that was fun. Uh, we got to see the good old hair whip. Uh, people are chin EST, EST. People are into Bianca Belair. She's going. If she's not the next NXT champion, she's going to win the Battle Royal. She has to. She might not win the Battle Royal, but she needs to go up to Raw. That's the thing. Yeah, but I, I'm now almost in the Callum camp where I just don't want to see anybody go yeah makes sense like it, it, you just become boring instantly on monday night i don't know what it is you just immediately become boring and i don't want to see bianca belair get boring ever because she did wonderful in this match i mean you're talking about near falls moments where i thought for just a split second could we see a triple threat at wrestlemania um, shockingly, Rhea Ripley gets the win with the Riptide almost out of the blue. It was so quick. I saw them in the corner. I turned around for five seconds, and Ripley had already won. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I dig that. It's you. You have a good match. I dig it. That's how it works. I, I <laughs> you know, it's uh, Ripley should have won. She did win. 
They followed through with that. They followed through with uh, Charlotte Flair attacking Ripley after the match. She grabbed a mic and said, so I thought about it and I'll see you at WrestleMania. So So just so we're clear, if anybody has any fucking doubts about what the best women's division in the industry is, there are two matches announced for WrestleMania. One of which is a Brock Lesnar match and the other is the NXT Women's Championship match. Are those the only two that are confirmed so far? Those are the only two that are confirmed. Yeah, because Becky and Baszler hasn't been confirmed. It's not confirmed yet. Bailey, who the fuck's going on with Bailey? Nobody knows. Intercontinental title? No. United States? No. Raw and SmackDown tag? No. Women's tag? No. no. 24-7? No, of course not. Uh, Edge and Orton? Not confirmed. Yeah, wow. The only, the only two matches that are confirmed are the NXT Women's Championship match and the Brock Lesnar match. And that's not a slight on Drew McIntyre that I'm calling it the Brock Lesnar match. I'm just saying... It's the Brock Lesnar match. <laughs> they they set up two things. One of whom is who's fighting Lesnar, and the other is, God, we gotta get the NXT Women's Division on WrestleMania. By the way, since we're here, I have a note from the media call, which Sean Ross Hepp was taking part in, and he kind of just passed along the little blurb. Hunter says that it was not a USA directive to get more main roster stars. That the idea to do Charlotte and Rhea came directly from Vince McMahon. And Hunter says, I was as shocked as anybody else. Hmm. But Vince wanted to see Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Almost as if Vince paid attention during war games and Survivor Series. And then and went, must oh, <laughs> this person's great. Oh, look you at this Keith Lee guy. Look at this Rhea Ripley. Look. Yeah. We got Shayna Baszler. Keep Lee and Rhea Ripley. Yeah, it's like, huh, surprising. You watch the show and it doesn't work out pretty well. Um, and we had the Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish and Kyler Riley against the Broser Waits, Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle for the NXT Tag Team Championship. I got started off with uh, them on the Broser Weight Mobile. I got, I got a question. How much fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish could fry fish? Four. That sounds about right. One for each member of the industry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. They start off with that. The, they got a t-shirt now. They have a little, like, um, I forget the name, but they call it, where the little thing's at the bottom of the screen and people can sing along with it. There's uh, a name so for it. It's like, nah, it's a, there's a different type of name for it, but I'm um, blanking on it. Everybody call the bouncing ball. <laughs> <laughs> or the bouncing fish. And, uh, you know, they're getting that over more. They're having more fun. They were playing around with that stuff. And then they end up having a fantastic tag team match. And it's not just a fantastic match. It's a fantastic tag team match. The whole match had lots and lots of double team moments or somebody escaping from a move because their partner comes in and does something. Or I'm going to set up a move and my partner's going to finish it. Or... You know, they even had the moments where, like, Dunn and Riddle ended up accidentally hitting each other. And it's like, oh, that's going to be the end of the match. And then it's like, oh, no, they kicked out. Fuck. Woo. Like, this was awesome. This. I love the fact that I'm just so jovial that the whole fucking thing. This is so good. I love Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Best in the world. Bar none. They stumbled into greatness. You ever, you ever, you know, do the whole, hey, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. You got peanut butter in my... That's the fucking browser weights. It's so weird when you, <laughs> like, if you think about... Uh, go down this rabbit hole while we're not. This is like an all talk show type of topic, but let's do it. Uh, somebody was like, hey, I got cereal. I think I'll add milk to it. And then they're like, this is amazing. And then there's other days where people go... Well, I've got bacon. I think I should dip it in Ketchup. like like Vaseline. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you're like, nope, you still shouldn't eat it. You know, like it's just sometimes you get these weird people that put orange orange juice in their uh in their cereal. And I don't know what's wrong with them. And then other times And then other times you you find you're looking around your house, you got some bread, you got some Nutella, you got some peanut butter. You, know, you put it in the form of a sandwich, and I mean, it's just fucking delicious. And ladies and gentlemen, the Preserves are fucking delicious. 
Like, as good as tag team wrestling gets, they are that good, and they shouldn't be. Again, Keith Lee and Dijakovic shouldn't be that good. Brozoids, thrown together team, totally thought they were going to fight at Tampa. They Not doing that, and they shouldn't be that good. And guess what? They fucking are, because magic happens when you let people be them. So we're, uh, well, we'll backtrack and we'll do this. Uh, Brizzerweights win the titles, and I'm all for it. I think that's a, a great decision. And then we get into the NXT championship match. And... Well, real, real quick, Triple H on the post show goes, yeah, I heard, I don't know anything about the Brizzerweights being in my plan, but now that you mention it, the pilot was complaining the entire time. About smoke issues. <laughs> uh, Adam Cole defends against Tommaso Ciampa. Adam Cole retains. Hold and on. what before, is before we before we just give away what happened at the end there? Another match that okay, Ciampa's good. We know that Cole is great. We know that. Did not think. That they would have me on the edge of my seat for so fucking long. This was a long match. And a match with a lot of false finishes. And arguably too many. But man, oh man. Did it have me engaged. And by the end of it, just screaming. Because I know what we're getting in Tampa. Yeah, this match was one that I was worried about because I thought that maybe Ciampa would go in injured and it would kind of hamper the situation. And it didn't at all. If he was injured, didn't seem like it. They had a phenomenal match and every false finish that was happening, the crowd's eating it up. Uh, There's multiple moments where I'm like, ah, it's going to be it. Okay. Ciampa, he's got the, like the edge and it's going to turn around and Cole's going to beat him. Oh fuck. He kicked out. Okay. Oh, now the undisputed era is coming out. Oh, Ciampa actually got this. When Ciampa hit that second, um, the, 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 uh, fairy tale ending. Yeah. When he hit the second oh one my, of those, so I'm like, you're talking about Oh my God, he won the title. Like, Cole hits Panama sunrise off the announce table onto the floor, rolls Ciampa in. I look at the clock. It's about nine 53. Champa immediately pops to his feet, hits the Willow's Bell DDT into the fairy tale ending, and I said, "Oh my God, Champa just won the belt." And I started getting my thing ready of new champion crowd. I know I'd already written part of the fight size update for Fightful that said uh, Adam Cole, the only member of the NXT era left with gold, and I'm like, "No, no, 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 no!" <laughs> and thankfully, Cole kicks out. Out comes the era. They get their asses handed to them by Ciampa like good goons should. And because of that distraction, Cole hits three super kicks, hits the last shot. I'm like, ah, there it is. Nope. Referee gets knocked down. Okay. Cole hits a low blow, but Ciampa hits one right back. And at this point, the title belt's in the ring. Ciampa hits fairytale ending. No referee. He goes for the belt, and oh shit, Johnny Gargano's there. Now, what was going through your mind with that? Because I was of two opinions that were conflicting. Part of me said, oh no, they're going to have Gargano hit Ciampa. And the other part of me went, wait, no. He's out there to hit Adam Cole. And to make it to where it's like, no, I got your back, and we're going to... And like Velveteen Dream's going to come out. and then. Like somebody else is going to come out and it's going to be all like, hey, you know, like we've got this like four on four type of thing going or whatever. And then Gargano hits Chop and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> so after, after the era comes out, I convince myself that I'm hearing a clock ticking and I'm like, oh shit, they're just going to debut Cross and Cross is going to go right for Chompa. But I guess that was the fans like banging on the barricade. So, uh, I'm looking and I'm thinking, does Dallas... Because at this point, I'm like, somebody... Too much has happened here. Somebody is coming 
to set the stage for Tampa? Is it Dream? Is it... And I'm looking and I'm looking. And when I see Gargano, my instinct was, I told them it was going to be a fucking triple threat. Because he's going to try to get involved and he's going to accidentally hit Ciampa and then hit Cole. And it's like, ah, triple threat. And then I look and I'm like, wait. Ciampa's going for the... Ah, he's going to take the fucking title from Ciampa. No. <laughs> and because I'm thinking that we're not we're not going back here. There's no way we're going back. He hits Champa and I just started fucking Tampa's gonna be amazing. <laughs> like we're gonna get the fucking blow off match that we should have got last year. Yes. Cause think about it. They're the best feud in NXT and they never fucking finished. Did I ever think in a million years Gargano would be the heel? No. But they're the best feud in NXT, and I can't not be excited, because at this point, the only main player of the five that we were talking about, that I don't know what they're doing in Tampa, is Balor. Because, if you ask me, Cole and Dream is a thing, and Dream is finally getting that belt from Tampa. So, this is where I kind of wanted to circle back about some of those, because... Well, partially because I just I, I think that this is kind of enjoyable, but <laughs> let's try to figure out what they might do. I mean, this could change as soon as tomorrow afternoon or something. But um, Rhea Ripley's got the NXT Women's Championship. We know she's not dropping that belt. So Ripley is either facing somebody and defending the title successfully or she's doing something else like. A tag team match or something. I think we're going to end up getting a weird situation where it's enemies team. Like, we we're going to get two, uh, what's sort of looking for? Strange Bedfellows kind of match where it's Rhea and Baszler against Charlotte and Becky. And that way you're like, Okay, they all have ties to NXT. And you're also getting a huge preview for WrestleMania tomorrow. That or maybe even just Rhea and uh Becky against Baszler and Flair. You could do that too. I can't see listen, I think in a perfect world they should all just fight each other. Cause like then they're for combustible elements where it would make sense if they're just perpetually fighting because Becky and Charlotte don't like each other. Becky and uh, Shayna are biting each other. Rhea dethroned Baszler and yeah, Becky and Rhea don't have a lot of beef, but you know, they can find a reason to fight. So I kind of think you're going to end up getting the, well, le- legally, technically, Rhea and Baszler are NXT people. Technically, uh, Flair and Becky are Raw people. So that's how you end up getting that. Now, I had thought before that there was a possibility we would get like the NXT UK Women's Championship defended. But they also announced we're getting another NXT UK takeover. And it's happening right. April 26th. And it's going to be in Dublin, Ireland. So that defeats the whole idea of my backup plan of, well, maybe you incorporate more of the NXT UK people. Well, you kind of can't because now they recorded enough episodes to lead. Like by the time we get to March and they do. I think that that's when the next taping is. Let me double check uh, just to be sure. But I'm pretty sure that the next taping is sometime in March. Yeah, March 6th and 7th at the Sky Dome. That'll carry them up until. April 26th. Because the next one after that's. Oh, wait, no, no, it isn't. Okay, yeah, never mind. We've got. Um... Yeah, I'm all over the place. Sorry about that. Uh, we've got March 6th and 7th, and then the next set of tapings is May 1st and 2nd. So this next set of tapings is going to determine everything that's leading past WrestleMania when it comes to NXT UK. I don't think we're getting NXT UK as a factor for NXT take over Tampa as much as I thought anymore. So the Ripley thing very much up in the air. 
the, they gotta um, do something though because yeah they can't just ignore her. if they don't because my question to you becomes how much of this build plays out on raw and how much of it plays out on nxt they definitely have far too much time that they can't do both they can't do mm-hmm. two weeks uh two times a week for the next like seven weeks they'll They'll burn themselves out so fast. Now, I Triple H on the previous media call, not the one he did tonight, but the one he did in uh, on Wednesday, said, "I'm not getting rid of Shayna until somebody makes a trade for her." Now, you can make a reasonable argument. I'm trading Shayna to Raw to finish this thing with Becky in order to get. Charlotte on NXT, and then even if it's just for up until the Superstar Shakeup, Charlotte is a permanent fixture on NXT, and then she can like move to SmackDown or something. Yeah, they could do something like that. Because I, I still think there's I a know, possibility that we get Ripley versus Dakota Kai. Even I know we're not going this far ahead, but I'm gonna go this far ahead anyway. What is the likelihood that Charlotte Flair wins that title? I don't think she wins it. Does Rhea Ripley, in your eyes, not saying what they're trying to do, in your eyes, is this elevating NXT or just elevating Ripley? Uh, it's more elevating Ripley than NXT, but so if Ripley by proxy, match, it does it does help NXT. But if Ripley wins this match against Charlotte Flair, who is, by the way, a main eventer of WrestleMania, is she not mandated, almost, to be on either Raw or SmackDown? Yeah, it kind of gets confusing at that point, right? Because then, who beats Ripley for the title and when? Because Vince will be like, I want her on Raw. And then, you kind of defeat the purpose of the whole thing, so... That's why I didn't want Rhea Ripley be the one Charlotte challenge because I think I think you're you're setting a weird precedent and I I know people who listen to this are probably sick of hearing me say this but it just feels weird to me like you know I don't feel like this is helping anybody I think for the short term it'll look cool but next year at Wrestlemania if Roman Reigns wins. Is Roman Reigns going to challenge Velveteen Dream for the NXT title in the Man of Mania? Not likely. Nah, it's probably a one-time type thing. I still think, I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but I still think Money in the Bank and Royal Rumble that you should have the option to challenge for the Intercontinental in the United States even. Just because, why wouldn't you? They're supposed to mean something, you know? But I'm willing to, to give them the benefit of the doubt, at least for right now. I don't I know why. The <laughs> cool. I thought, like, you know, Charlotte showing up. She looks cool in, like, that leather jacket. Like, she's casual, but she still looks like the most high-class girl in the room. You know, and Charlotte is on another, on another level. For that matter, so is Ripley. For that matter, so is Belair. Yeah. And... I I mean, really, uh, Becky, Shayna, Ripley, Belair, and Charlotte are the top five, and then right now, and that's me saying that as a huge Sasha Banks person, like those five are just in another stratosphere on February seventeenth, twenty twenty. So the women's situation? Question marks. The tag team situation the for the women's. I probably will lean that direction too, but I, I think that maybe there's a Dakota Kai match. We'll we'll figure out a little bit more when it comes to the NXT this week. Probably the Bros are waiting to the new tag team champions. They could very easily just have another match with the Undisputed Era, or somebody else could get in the mix. And I'm trying to think of who else could potentially do that. And the only team I can really think of is Grizzled Young Veterans. There will be a ladder match. A takeover. I think that'll but, be the North American Championship match. Right. Because that's, that's the question in my mind. Is it the North American 
or is it the tag team? Because if it's the tag team, then it's Undisputed Era, Broserweights, Grizzled Young Vets, and honestly, I'd say get the time splitters back in here. There's a... With the North American thing, we talked about this before, uh, before, and I still kind of stand by it. Lee, Dijakovic, Damian Priest. Maybe they go with Roderick Strong in there. I would assume so, because you got to get strong on the card somehow. Okay, well, let me put it this way. This is what I'm thinking. They'll probably do six matches, right? Maybe. Kind of assume that that'll be the case. Uh, six. Yeah, okay. Uh, so something with Ripley. Who knows what? Uh, something with the tag team division, either it's Bros or Waits versus Undisputed Hour in an ODQ match or just another match or another set of tag teams get involved, whatever it is. Just tag team titles are on the line as well. You know what so, I wouldn't be surprised about? Something like a two out of three falls. Yeah, maybe they do something like that. That's the way it's like, it's a gimmick, but it's not like a street fight type thing. So there's two matches. The women's title involved in that, the tag title involved in that. Match number three, I think this time around, cruiserweights get on the card. And that's whoever. It's a uh, devil in against Kushida. I don't know. Uh, They'd be a good division to test run the championship scramble again. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think that we get uh, Velveteen Dream versus Finn Balor. Uh... But then who fights Adam Cole? And I think that we get the North American title is Lee, Dijakovic, Priest, and Strong. Okay. In like a ladder match or something. And then the main event is Cole versus Ciampa versus Gargano. I think Ripley question mark. Probably get a Cruiserweight title match on there. We're getting Cole, Ch- uh, we're not Cole Champa, Gargano Champa, in like if NXT has a Hell in a Cell, or uh, maybe that that like Asylum match if they want to give that a name that they did last year with uh, Cole and Ch- Gargano, they need to do that because they can't have a match. They need to have, like, have an I quit. Or, like, it needs to be a definitive stipulation. Um, tag team-wise, I'll play it safe and say Bros. Raids for Sunday Undisputed Era, two out of three falls. I think you have to get Bianca Belair in something. So maybe it's um, Rainy Gonzalez with Dakota Kai or vice versa against Bel Air. I would say if North American title match, ladder match, six way, you yeah, got Champa, damn it, I keep saying Champa, uh, Dijakovic, Keith Lee, Damian Priest, you got Roger Strong. Strong. Maybe this is where we introduce Cross. Perhaps, maybe. And I, you know, you have somebody in there like. Um, See, I'm not know. expecting Cross to be there anytime soon. Look at how long they took before Chelsea Green and Deanna Peraza were brought into the mix. That was like Cross a full is a year. Animal. He's he's more polished. But as I said that, then I think, or do we just bypass everything? And is it Keith Lee Finn Balor? Hmm. You know, because he'll be like, ah, I'm, I'm the prince and I'm going to have the one, you know, championship I've never gotten a chance at. I'm going to win the NXT North American title. I think it would be a little lackluster. But I also think I don't want to see Finn Balor thrown into the title match 
just to have him thrown into the title match. I want that to be Dream one on one. If it's not Balor Dream, I think that it is a fatal four way for the title. Cole, Champa, Gargano, and Balor. But then at that point, I would wonder why they would bother to turn Gargano heel because then you'd have one baby face and three heels. So no, because that's what I'm saying. Like Gargano, I can't see them doing what they did with Gargano just to have him be like, and I'm going to be the third man in this match. Like, no. It, like, if you would have hit Ciampa and then hit Cole and kind of replay, revisited the whole tweener thing like a year ago with Aleister Black, I'd have been like, okay. This is where they're going with that, you know, fine. But it has to be a definitive end. Like an end to this rivalry. And it's the perfect thing to do for your WrestleMania weekend show. Because you can almost lose a Rhea Ripley. Because you're gaining all this history and all this energy from Ciampa and Gargano. Whatever they're doing, um, I'm in because it's NXT. They do a great job. This pay per view was awesome. They and don't. They don't fucking miss. You know, like if they do they, miss. It's rare, and it's not like it's never uh, game changing. It's just like, oh man, that didn't connect as much as I would have liked it to. Yeah. So it's so good to watch an event that's just flat out good and. And just talk about it for a little bit and be happy. Yeah. And that's awesome because, yeah, big thumbs up for me all around. Yep. It's already on my list for a potential pay per view of the year. Um, right now, this is a strong, strong run. This is the best NXT pay per view of the decade so far. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not even close. Um,. Yeah, so tell us what you think about this. You know, what were your favorite matches? What parts were you a little bit underwhelmed with, if any? And where do you think we're going from here? Drop them in the comments below. I mentioned... uh, I'm accepting uh, fantasy booking suggestions for Bronson Reed throughout (laughs) the entirety of 2020. So if you want to just, you know, pass that along, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. I do please send all your Bronson Reed fan art my way. (laughs) Fan art? (laughs) You're gonna get those weird deviant art accounts that are gonna draw oh, oh, the two yeah, of you together. Yeah, I'm gonna get like a furry Bronson Reed, Bronson Reed dinosaur fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brontosaurus and, Reed. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and outside of that, I'm on Fightful.com. I'm on WrestleZone.com. I uh, just keep loving wrestling. Just keep supporting. I'm so happy. Like I love when wrestling is good. I mentioned a lot of the things that I would normally do in my plugs. I already mentioned Patreon. I mentioned fanboysanonymous.com. I uh, didn't mention the merch shops, but uh, T Public and Redbubble. Check them out. See if you want to pick up a t shirt or something like that. They got a plenty of different designs on that for this mark out moment, Fanboys Anonymous, and A Mango Tees. So if you want to pick something up, go ahead and check it out. If not, I understand. Uh, I mentioned before, but the YouTube channel is not monetized anymore, and that's why I keep plugging the Patreon even more, so share your support if you've got the spare change, and if you don't, another way that you can just share your support is to share us, to like the videos, to spread the word, to leave the comments, to subscribe, all that other kind of stuff. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Smart Moment as well. Stay tuned for the future episodes that are coming your way, which are going to be the hot tags, and as I mentioned before, we're going to do the uh, commentary track for NXT Arrival. And we've got for the Fanboys Anonymous thing, we get the World's Finest thing. Uh, we also are not 100% sure what we're going to do for our quote unquote main event for this next week coming up. But more than likely, we'll probably debut uh, one of those new segments that we were talking about, which is Hall of Lame. And if not, then maybe we'll do Wrestling is 2020 again. Maybe we'll do. An impromptu superstar scores. I don't really know. We'll kind of figure it out a little bit closer to Tuesday or Wednesday, and we'll get that up when it's up. And of course, if you're subscribed and you know when we get these uh, alerts and stuff, you'll get the alert and you'll know when it's up. So stay tuned for that. Later on, throughout the next weeks and stuff, we'll get into the Super Showdown stuff and AEW Revolution. And then we'll start getting into Elimination Chamber. And by that point, the Smart Madness tournament will be going on. So pay attention to that on the sidebar of smartcatmoment.com as well. Just keep staying tuned. I'll keep filling you in. But for now, 
This has been another Smart Out moment, and we're being counted out.